AWS versus Microsoft Azure. Maybe you're an engineer looking to specialize in the cloud and are figuring out which cloud provider to go with and start learning. Or perhaps you're a business looking to migrate your workloads to the cloud and are wondering which cloud provider is suitable for those workloads. This is a common comparison between the two market leaders. And many people have strong opinions of why they went for one over the other. In this video, we're going to join the discussion. And by the end of this video, you'll be more clear on your decision. My name's Caleb and I've worked in the cloud space for several years. I've mostly worked as an Azure focused engineer, but I'm also an AWS community builder. So I speak with no biases. And let's start with the background. Now, AWS or Amazon Web Services launched in 2006, and they are considered the pioneer of modern cloud computing. Microsoft Azure only launched about four years after that in 2010, but it quickly gained ground with so many Microsoft products already being on devices and desktops and that sort of thing. AWS is the current market leader and they have been for a very long time with Azure growing rapidly. Let's take a look at the most recent graph I can find. This is the numbers from Q4 2024, so the end of last year on the cloud market share. As you can see, AWS has 30% of market share as a cloud provider, with Azure coming in second at 21%. And then there's Google Cloud in third, and then the rest come after. Now, number one, when it comes to services and features, one of AWS's strengths is the range of services they provide. It is massive. They have over 200 services for engineers and companies they're not likely to be using that many. There'll be some core services that they're using. You're not gonna use all 200 or more, but it's important to note that there's so much going on in AWS and they have so many different features and services. Let's take a look at the AWS console and the Azure portal and look at the process of deploying a virtual machine and the process of deploying an EC2. So EC2 and virtual machine are essentially the exact same thing. So an EC2 is a virtual machine. And this is also a point with AWS using some interesting names to name their services. But we'll cover that later in this video. So to my left, we are in the AWS console. And to my right, we're in the Azure portal. And essentially, I'm doing the same thing, except on AWS, I'm creating a Linux virtual machine. And on Azure, I'm creating a Windows server. So they're the same, you name your machine, you decide what network it's gonna run on and you give it the login, password, credentials, that sort of thing, and then deploy. Now, for those who are learning AWS or Azure, this is probably one of the first projects that you do in these platforms. You create a virtual machine or an EC2, set it up for a particular use case. Maybe that's setting up a domain controller, maybe that's setting up a web server, whatever the case. Now let's move on to pricing. Now it's quite clear that AWS and Microsoft Azure have been competing for some time. And it seems that as a result, they kind of have the same pricing for most things. You know, it might sway slightly in one direction or slightly in another, but generally they are at the same level in terms of pricing. However, I did find this article from Microsoft themselves that may say otherwise. Take a look at this. This is on azure.microsoft.com, this is Microsoft's official website. They've said, Azure versus AWS, see why organizations all over the world recognize Azure over Amazon Web Services. Wow, that is competitive. And they say here, pay less with Azure. A direct comparison from launching an Azure SQL managed instance and an SQL server on AWS, claiming that you could pay $13 for the Azure managed instance and pay almost $200 the AWS SQL Server. Now, I do find this quite interesting and it makes me wonder how this came about. Nonetheless, this is their only example that they've put about this on their website, which kind of tells us that this is not the case with every service. As you know, there are so many services in Azure and AWS. And if there was more evidence of the pricing advantages, I feel as if they'd have more examples of that on their website, just saying. Now, another important point to mention is that when companies or individuals are looking for cloud providers, they often feel like these are their only two options, but they are not the only options. It's not even just Azure, AWS, and GCP. Actually, European alternative clouds have become very popular. For example, this is UpCloud. So UpCloud is a cost-effective European cloud service provider. And when comparing UpCloud to Azure and AWS, it is 
far more cost effective and much cheaper. So if you're an individual or a business looking for a simple, easy to use cloud platform, check out UpCloud. As you can see here, I've got my server. It was really easy and quick to deploy and I get a clear breakdown of how much it costs monthly to run this server. The platform is so simple. You've got your servers, storage, networks, databases, etc. When using platforms like AWS and Azure, it can be slightly overwhelming with so many services on the platform and of course, much less cost effective. So check out UpCloud and more on UpCloud later in this video. Now moving on to performance and availability. Both of these providers are well known globally, but it is important to note that AWS does have more global regions and availability zones than Azure does. That being said, Azure still has strong coverage across the world, particularly in Europe and Asia. And this leads us on to another big comparison, and that is AI. Now, it's quite clear that Microsoft is leading the race in AI. This is a report from late last year but it says that Microsoft accounted for 45% of new cloud AI case studies, including 62% of generative AI focused projects. And yes, this is a result of their collaboration with OpenAI. Microsoft became a strategic partner of OpenAI, and that of course put them ahead of other cloud platforms when it comes to artificial intelligence and how quickly they're advancing in that area. That being said, AWS has put in an incredible amount of investment in AI technology. The financial report stating that they'd spent over a hundred billion dollars towards AWS AI infrastructure. Those are incredible numbers. Let's talk a little bit about the user interface. As we saw in the last demo, we can compare the differences between the two interfaces, the AWS console and the Azure portal. At the Azure portal, is easy for a beginner to get used to. The way it's set up is quite appealing and the naming of services and tools and other things is quite easy to pick up and understand. Whereas AWS still has a decent, simple kind of console. It's not overly complicated. However, it's not nearly as appealing for a beginner. And there is a lot of confusion when it comes to the naming of some of these services. Take a look at this list. So we've got things like an EC2, we've got Lambda, we've got Elastic Beanstalk. Now, things like this, a beginner would be like, what in the world is that? Whereas if you said virtual machine, it would be easy for a beginner to understand what that is, making it just slightly easier to pick up and understand in terms of the naming convention. And generally, when I've spoken to people, they've said that they kind of prefer the way Azure is set up and the layout of the Azure portal and that sort of thing. Another important point to mention when choosing the cloud provider is that you may not need the complexities of AWS or Microsoft Azure. You may need a simple, easy to use cloud provider such as UpCloud to run your workloads. So here we are in the AWS console once again and we can see all of the services they have from cloud financial management to security and identity, compute, containers, storage, satellite. There are so many different types and categories of services in the AWS console. How many of these services will you actually be using? Then if we take a look at the Azure portal, similarly, we have so many services and for an enterprise, having all these services is probably useful and helpful and you may use a lot of them. Goes into AI machine learning, compute, hybrid and multi-cloud, got migration, we've got mixed reality, we've got web and mobile and so much more. Now for an enterprise, this may be super valuable. However, if you're just using the portal for some specific use cases, you may go with something like UpCloud. It's very simple. You've got your servers. It's just a simple tab on the left where you've got your servers You've got your network and you can manage your network through this tab. You can run peering for completely free. Also got your routers, which you can create for completely free, your virtual routers. Got various databases that you could create. You've even got load balancers and Kubernetes. You can create Kubernetes clusters and services. And that's pretty much what it is overall. You've also got Terraform, which you can use to deploy and automate this stuff. And for many companies or individuals, that's all you'll need in a simple, platform without the complexities of AWS and Azure and the hundreds of services on those platforms. And if you want to try out UpCloud for completely free, just use the link in the description below 
to start your free trial. And a big thank you to Upcloud for sponsoring this video. Now certifications, and we've spoken a lot about certifications on this channel. Now, as we know, the cloud space certifications are huge for professionals getting into cloud, it's almost a given that you will be going after some sort of certification. Now, I kind of find it difficult to compare the two certifications. Perhaps I'll be quite biased to Azure certifications as I've gone after a lot of them and taken a lot of them in the past and I haven't gone after that many AWS. But I will say that both of the certifications under these two companies are highly respected in the industry and they both give you great paths to going from the beginner to the expert. And if you are a beginner going on the Azure path, then you'll be looking at the AZ900 to get started with. Or if you're a beginner going down the AWS route, you'd be going after the cloud practitioner to start to learn and gain your understanding. I'll leave one or two links to courses for each of these two in the description. Check that out. Now to summarize some of these points, choose AWS if, if you're looking for maximum scalability, cutting edge services, global reach, and if you would prefer to be going for the current leader in the market and choose Microsoft Azure. If you're in a Microsoft heavy environment, you need strong hybrid support or you're building enterprise grade solutions with existing Microsoft tools. Think about integration with the tools that you already have. If your environment is filled with Microsoft technology already, then it might be an easy transition to go with Microsoft Azure and have a great ease of integration. Now remember this, there are many companies, more particularly medium to large companies, which are multi-cloud. They don't just use AWS or Azure or GCP, they use multiple of these cloud technologies for various things. And that might mean that during your career, you won't have to focus on only one of these cloud providers and be a specialist in one. But however, at the beginning, of course, you will have to make a choice. At the end of the day, both AWS and Azure are powerful cloud platforms with their own strength. So make sure your choice depends on your specific needs and your existing tech stack. Drop a comment below saying if your team is your or team AWS. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And if you enjoyed this video, you're going to love this one.